We're on the road again. If you enjoyed our series from Northern Ireland earlier this summer, then you are in for a treat because we have a bonus episode. And look, I've got this absolutely fabulous little car for our journey, so let's get going. Paul's not with me. I wonder where he is. Well, it's time to go. See you along the way. Happy travels. I can't believe it. I've come somewhere where I haven't been for probably 40 years. I used to come here with my father when he had a boat. This is the cuts. Oh wow. You see this little bridge? So this opens up to let the boat go through the lock. And we used to walk across there. So my father must have had a boat down here somewhere. Look, this is amazing. So this is the Ban, and we're just uh, a mile maybe outside of Colrain. This is so strange being back here. It seemed quite big, I suppose, back in the day, because I was like just a little boy. Um, it doesn't seem that big now really at all. There's a sign over there and it says that it's called Cuts Lock and it's run by Waterways Ireland. Well, I've just spotted some really interesting information about the Cuts. The Cuts got its name because a passage was cut in the river's bedrock to bypass rapids, thus making the river navigable for boats. The Cuts in the rock also enabled the trapping of salmon. Prior to the work, which started in 1612, goods had to be laboriously transferred between vessels, one above and one below the rapids. Here you can look out for salmon. Locally, this stretch of river is known as the Salmon Leap, where salmon can still be seen leaping during their migration upstream to spawn. That tree over there was probably still around, probably a sapling when I was young. What did you think of it here, Paul? Wow, um, I think this reminds me of the one in Uxbridge, but in a much bigger scale. 
Well, of course, in Uxbridge, it's a canal. This mm. is a river. This is the River Ban. It's amazing. I haven't seen anything like this. There's a little stairway down there. Shall we go have a look? Down to the water's edge? Yeah. Sure. Paul certainly looks as though he's enjoying it. He's just sitting there taking it all in. This paint looks as though it's been here since my day. Look at that, it's coming off. Certainly hasn't had a fresh look of paint in several decades, I would imagine. Oh look! They do charter trips along the band from here now as well. Is that an animal over there? It looks like one of those white little birds. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Very tall looking. Yeah, like a stork or something. But the water's flowing that direction and that will take you out to the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. If you like our channel so far, why not hit the subscribe button on YouTube? I really love the green post boxes in the Republic of Ireland. They're so cute, I think, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a really modern one. And where we are in Muff and County Donegal, this one is situated outside the post office. When you are driving along the hills, you will see sheep on the side of the road. Please take care. Hello, Louie! The rail network in Northern Ireland calls at several places along the coast and one of them is Castle Rock which is a lovely little seaside place with a beautiful beach nestled between Coleraine and Limavady. So you can get on a train from Derry Londonderry or Belfast or any stop in between and stop off at Castle Rock. It's an interesting station because it's on a single track you could just come for the day or you could perhaps use Castle Rock as a little bit of a base and then you could travel into Coleraine or elsewhere and do some shopping and other sightseeing. Castle Rock has got quite a pretty little station building. It's not open today and it's quite an interesting point because it says boarding a train without a ticket may result in a fine. So where do you get the ticket? I think you can actually buy them on board. What are you doing, Marcus? 
I'm trying to find our subscribers. So they seem to have disappeared. So please subscribe. <laughs>
And the, I have the chips and the mushy peas. And I have the onion rings and um, chunky fries. So I think we both give a thumbs up to the Carlingford Absolutely. Arms. Absolutely. I think that it's like Northern Ireland, like in the inner bit over here. I think so. When visiting Northern Ireland, you may notice a difference in banknotes. The three banks which you may notice are Ulster Bank, Danske Bank, and First Trust. Each one produces their own banknotes, and in this case, we have the Ulster banknotes for 20, 10, and 5. On the 20, you could see people listening to traditional music, and on the back is a nice array of flowers in the garden. Let's see what the 10 has to offer. The 10, you could see horses pulling a tractor in the field. And just like the 20, there are flowers in the background. Let's see how the five differs from it. On one side, you could see a girl here and the family in the background on the beach and just like the others it's flower orientated so i think this might show that there is an abundance of greenery because ireland does get a lot of rain similarly the local banks in scotland also issue their own banknotes up there but i do must point out that even though this is legal tender, banks outside of Northern Ireland are not obliged to accept these banknotes as legal tender. So I would say maybe try to use them while you're here, or you could use them once you're back next time you're here. Just like the Bank of England notes, these are also made of polymer, so you can't actually tear into them, which is a good thing. Lastly, Bank of England notes are accepted everywhere in the United Kingdom, even here.